to do some short content videos in between some of my bat reps for you. And the first one I want to go over is the base set ship. So in this we're just going to go over the ships, the differences between the two different types, and what they're used for, some you know theories of what I think they might be used for in future forces. So I hope you all enjoy. Here we have the Victory class Star Destroyers. We have the Victory 1 and Victory 2 class. And they're exactly the same as far as stats goes, except for the weapons dice that they use. And there's one upgrade card that's switched around um, because of those dice. One, the Victory 1 class has a card that's useful for black dice, and then the Victory 2 has one that's useful for blue dice. So just going right down the line, I'm going to go through what their upgrade cards are. And so the first one is Officer, the second one is Weapons Team, the third one is Offensive Retrofit, and then the Victory 1 class has Ordnance, and then the Victory 2 class has Ion Cannons, and they both have Turbo Lasers to finish it off. And both of these ships can also have a title and a commander. So basically for the upgraded one, you're basically paying 12 points for blue dice instead of black dice. And that's basically all you're paying for, but it gives you a lot more range, so it might be worth it. So I have some pros and cons of the, this ship. So some of the pros is that it has a lot of hull and a lot of shields, so it's going to be able to take a lot of punishment before it goes down. It also has really powerful weapons, and the rebels are going to be really scared going up against this and going to want to maneuver in a proper way. And another benefit is it has tons of upgrade slots, so you have tons of different ways that you can customize this ship and make it better for you. And then the squadron and engineering battle values are really really good so utilizing them is going to give you a big advantage over some other ships now the cons for this ship is that it's really slow and it doesn't maneuver very well and the stats actually encourage people to get behind you where you're the weakest and attack you from there and then the last thing is that the, co the command value of this ship the command value is really high so you're gonna have to plan ahead quite a bit that can be a downside so as we're looking at some of the pictures here, you can just see how detailed the model is. It's just amazing. But I'm just theorizing here that this ship is going to be like your staple flagship, you know, normal ship for your Imperial Force. Even when the first wave comes out, I think the other ship that you're going to get in the first wave is going to be more of the support ship. And this is going to be your, you know, your big dog. He's going to take care of most of what you want from your, your Imperial fleet here. So. All right, let's move on to the Rebels. All right, here we have the CR-90 Corvette A and B. So again, very similar uh, ship-wise. Uh, the only things that are different are the weapons that it fires, the dice that it uses for the weapons, and then again, one of the upgrade cards is switched around because of that. So I'm going to go through them right in order again. So the first one is Officer, the second one is Support Team, the third one is Defensive Retrofit, and then on the Corvette A they have Turbo Lasers, and on the Corvette B it has the Ion Cannon upgrade. And again, both of these ships can have a title and a commander, and that doesn't count as one of their little upgrade slots there. It's just an extra thing that any ship can have. Basically for this ship, you're paying five points, five extra points for the red dice instead of the blue dice. And for the most part, it, I'm saying it's worth it. Just the range is really good for this ship. However, there are some upgrade cards that make it tempting to take the, the lower version, and we'll talk about that when I get into the upgrade cards. But Some of the pros for this ship is that it is the fastest, most maneuverable ship so far in the game and its command value is one so your commands you're flipping over right away you get to choose what you're gonna do right then and there which is really really useful for this type of ship now the cons for this ship are its squadron value is only one so it's not gonna be helping your squadrons out very much it has pretty low hull so a big hit could take it out pretty quick 
And then the defensive tokens are less effective because it's the dodge one. It happens really well at long range, but then as you get closer, it kind of diminishes away. And its engineering value is low. You can't repair any damage. So once it takes damage, it's stuck with them. So those are the cons for that. And again, as we look at the, the pictures here, I'm going to explain some like tactics that I think with this ship. I think this ship is going to be your cheap. You could spam it if you wanted to. But this is going to be the ship that you're going to outmaneuver your opponent with. I think it's going to be able to get behind targets really quickly like the Star Destroyer. And then the other thing is I think it's going to be a really good victory point pickup. Fly around, land on your victory points, hang out by them. You can fly away when you need to. So that's what I think of the Krillin Corvette. Next we're going to go into the Nebulon B. Alright, so here we have our two versions of the Nebulon B. And again, they're almost identical, except for this time, except for the weapons being switched. The thing that's different in this one is that Escort Frigate gets bonus to its fighter value and to its anti-squadron value, which makes it really good for hanging out with your fighter squadrons. So they don't have a whole lot of options for upgrades here, but we'll go through them. The first one is Officer, the second one is Support Team, and the third one is Turbo Lasers, and those are both the same all the way across the board. And basically in this ship, you're paying six points to upgrade for the squadron support. And honestly, I'm not sure that you ever don't want to pay that six points. It just adds so much to the rebel force to be able to go against squadrons and use your squadrons, which are really important and more expensive too. So, Pros for this ship are definitely the squadron support. The engineering value is pretty high. That's really nice. And it, ha it still has some good speed, so it can still maneuver decently. The cons are the weak sides. As you can see, it only has one shield on either side. And if the if Star Destroyer gets a big hit on that side, it's punching right through and going straight into your hull. So you really need to make good positioning with this ship. The other downside that I noticed is that it has the same total of shields as the Krillin Corvette, the CR-90, but it costs way more points. So it, you're not getting a whole lot more defensive capability for the extra points that you're paying for this ship. So you just need to be careful with it for sure. All right, let's take a look at the model here, which is, again, really high detail model. These are really fantastic. And as far as strategy goes, I think for now this is probably your kind of like flagship. It has more survivability than the Corvette does. But in the future, this is going to be a support ship. It's going to be really good at helping your squadrons get in and out and deal some damage, take out some enemy fighters, and support your other ships. And even more so we'll get into when I talk about the upgrades and title cards and stuff. Alright, so here we have the squadrons for the Imperials, and you can see we have the TIE Fighter Squadron, and then we also have Hall Runner, who is in a normal TIE Fighter Squadron as well. So, these the ships are identical, the squadrons are, they have four move, they have three hull, they have three anti-squadron value, and one, bl three blue, sorry, for the anti-squadron value, and one blue for the anti-ship value. They both have the ability of Swarm, and what Swarm lets you do is that if there's another squadron with swarm within one then you get to re-roll a die which can be really good so these have some pros and cons the pros are they are fast and that swarm ability is good and they are cheap eight points they are very cheap for a squadron right now the cons are is their hull is not very strong three an X-Wing can take that out in one go fairly easily. I've had it happen quite a few times already. <laughs> and the other thing is they're really poor against ships. So really, the the tactic with these is definitely just go after the other squadrons with them. You're not really going to rely on them beating up your opponent's ships too much. I mean, it'll be useful if they're around and you just get the extra dice, but don't count on them for a whole lot other than taking out other squadrons. Now, Howl Runner. She has the same stats like we talked about, but her big she has some big upside. 
she has Scatter as one of her defensive abilities, which just lets you cancel all the attack dice, which makes her really, really survivable compared to the just normal TIE Fighter Squadron. Her special rule also makes it so she gives other TIE Fighter Squadrons an extra die to roll, so that brings them up to the X-Wing level, but then also they are swarming, which lets them re-roll a die, so it almost gives them an advantage. She still has the speed. Her cost is not that expensive, only twice as much as a a TIE Fighter Squadron. Worth it, for sure. For her stats, I think you have to have her if you have at least three TIE Fighter Squadrons. I think she's a must-have. They just make your TIE Fighter Squadron so much better. Like I said, they bring you up to the X-Wing level, and maybe even beyond a little bit, as far as anti- fighters go, anti-squadrons. So, now we'll go into the rebel ships and we'll talk about the X-Wing. Alright, so here we have Luke Skywalker and the X-Wing squadrons. So we'll talk about the X-Wings first. They have some really good pros here. So they have a hull strength of 5. Very survivable. They have really good anti-squadron value with four blue dice, and their ship attack value is one red die. So they can actually do a bit of damage to ships. It's not not like the TIE Fighter with the blue die. And then they also have two special abilities. They have Escort, which isn't really... We're not going to really talk about it too much, but when the new fighters come out, Escort's going to be a big deal. It's going to be able to protect your other squadrons, basically. The other ability that it has is Bomber. And Bomber makes it so crits, which normally do nothing when squadrons roll them, they can actually hit ships with crits. So that is amazing to be able to do that. The cons are is they're quite a bit more expensive. At 13 points apiece, they're pretty high up there in the points, and you're not going to have nearly as many as TIE Fighter squadrons. And that's another downfall, is because of that more expensive points, the TIE Fighters are going to be able to swarm them quite a bit. So these, for sure, I would say you want to get help from your ships. Let them use their squadron value to command them around so you get the early attack and take out some of the enemy squadrons first. So that way you can get the most out of these ships because, like I said, their anti-ship value is really good. So being able to use them against ships is going to be really good. And so if you can accomplish destroying the fighters and going after their ships, they're going to be helpful. So next we have Luke Skywalker, who has the same pros as the X-Wing Squadron. It's exactly the same, except for he has two things. For one, he rolls a black die against ships, which is amazing. Black die can be really good and do a whole lot of damage. Now, the kicker for Luke is his top ability. His top ability makes it so when you're attacking ships, you basically count them as having no shields. So his attacks are going straight through. So if you deal a crit, you're going straight through the shields in, into the hull and dealing a face-up damage card. Amazing. Really, really good. His downside, his cost, that he you pay for it. 20 points, that's really expensive. And his defense tokens, while they're pretty good, he doesn't have, like Hellrunner does, a just straight-up cancel all attacks against me. So you got to be a little more careful with him. And if your opponent's rolling odd numbers, those tokens are not being as helpful for you. As far as strategies go with Luke, I think you use him the same as the X-Wing, except I would be even a little more cautious. You're paying a lot of points for him. And he can be super helpful against the capital ships. Well, thanks everyone for watching. Next up, I'm going to talk about the upgrade cards, so check back and look in for that one. It's going to be up pretty soon here, so keep an eye out. Again, feel free to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Please comment below. Talk about some strategies that you've found or that you, you're thinking about using with the different ships that we've seen here. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.